Hello, it's the captain, back in disembodied voice form. I wanted to do what I did last year and create a reflection of the past year while going over what's in store for 2023. I have a lot to say for this one, about everything that happened, the things I did, the things I didn't do, and what it means for the new year. There's a lot of mixed emotions I have about the whole 12 months. The one matter pressing for me to talk about is all the ways I was pulled away from the computer. Thankfully, none of it had to do with boredom or negligence, but rather, interruptions. There were a couple times I had to leave my home for a family event or a vacation, which is easy to plan around and, let's face it, you need some time from the computer. But then I had my and my wife's living situation compromised, which seemingly put everything good and fun on the back burner, cap it off with COVID at the start of May, and it just adds a new layer of shit. Events like these don't compromise me completely, but they do kill the momentum. I love my habits. I hate it when they have to be broken because I have to retrain myself on how to get everything back together. That means that while these stints away from the compi weren't too long, they did kill my momentum at all the wrong times. I really wanted to keep the schedule and release part two of Crank That Shark Boy, but that'll have to come this year. Speaking of habits, there is one thing I started doing that also contributed to the wider than usual gap in video output. For the first time since 2009, I'm working on multiple videos at once. I don't just mean two projects, I'm talking stream of consciousness creation, making it as it comes. This change not only helped me to recoup after all the time away, but it's also led to me starting on videos that I'd have otherwise waited on. Prior to this, my habits were a lot more straightforward. Finish the video being worked on before starting another. After all, that's how I tackle novels. But as I learned, not everything fits into the same mold. I found that I'm much less stressed when I'm working on multiple videos at once because it allows me to adapt to whatever I'm feeling when it comes to these videos, and I think the results have been stellar so far. Everything released from September onward was a result of this new change in direction, and I'm really excited for what I'll be releasing this year. But even before I started this new method of video making, I was very proud of what I'd released, particularly when it came to off-the-cuff videos that I had bursts of inspiration for. Will Smith was probably the most fun one to make, and I rewatch it the most out of all my videos this year. I was also proud of the updated Gilbert Gottfried YouTube poop. The King Buys NFTs was also one of my favorites, really any video in this series is. However, the 10 year anniversary to my Star Wars YouTube poop was the one video I was looking forward to completing the most. Even though it wasn't as deserving as Episode 1 was, the prospect of going at Episode 7 had been swimming in my mind for ages. I don't think I'll ever be satisfied with a year where I wasn't able to keep to the regimen I started up with, but while making this reflection of 2022, I thought to myself, if I had been able to release videos at the rate that I wanted, would I have been satisfied then? And the answer was no. I don't know how I could ever get tired of the amazing responses you give when I put something out, whether it just makes your mood better or collapses your lungs. If I could, I'd put something out every day, but alas, we've yet to invent the hyperbolic time chamber. Even still, for this year, look for me to really improve on the consistency that I wanted for this channel a year ago, especially now that I'm more comfortably set in my 9 to 5, and of course the puppy I have is calming down. I'm also mapping up other YouTube poop related projects. What I want to do is try to bring more people into the medium, particularly those who have never made a YouTube poop before, or just started and stopped. I've used my Twitter for sharing some YouTube poop tips and they'd make really good videos if I can find the right way to translate them. I haven't thrown out the idea of live streaming either, it's just going to have to be at a time where I can really dedicate more time to it. The one final thing that I want to talk about is YouTube itself. Last year I said that I'm not concerned about YouTube removing videos because of the sources I used, and I still feel that way. However, they've taken other actions that are more harmful to creators as a whole, not just YouTube poop creators, especially when it comes to handling ads and how they support the creative community. I despise seeing ads on any of my videos because that's not how I want to profit off doing this. Hell, I don't even want ads on my videos. They deserve to be seen no cost by any and everybody. The people who've supported me on Patreon have been such an incredible help and even the smallest fraction of a dollar is not unimportant to me. 
The truth is, I really want this to be the sole way I support myself and my family in the future. It's what I see myself doing down the line, and the greater the support, the more videos that I can make. And even if you can't support me financially, just you being there to share your reaction and show my stuff to your friends is really gratifying. Ultimately, I just don't want to sponsor Raid Shadow Legends on anything I make. And speaking of Patreon, thank you so much for all of the support from Ripple Bipple, Diadron, Morphs, Sebastian, Gaelstrom, Humdinger, Rare Type, Goober, Zvadin, the average loser especially, and of course, HJ and Numberer1. Every single one of you, I can't thank you enough for being such incredible patrons, and I hope that you enjoy what's on the way. Thank you so much for a wonderful 2022, guys. And everybody, get ready for 2023.